The future is here, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you my logo design process, incorporating new AI design tools to speed up my workflow. Stay tuned to find out. Studio Shepherd. So starting with a blank canvas, the first step of the design process is always to mood board. For this logo design, I'll be creating a new logo for Studio Shepherd. And so I'll start by getting some inspo on Pinterest. So first, I'm just getting some real photos of shepherds to better understand what they look like. And so I'm looking for defining characteristics to use in my designs. And so I'm liking the hats and the beards in these examples. And so I'll start adding these to my artboard. So next, I'll search some existing shepherd logos to see what's around and if there are any that I like. And so I'm looking for styles and shapes that catch my eye. I love the look of this one here, and it's inspired me to explore more mascot logos, which I think will be a nice style for my logo. And so I head down the rabbit hole a little bit longer, now exploring minimal mascot logos to look for some more abstract logo examples. And so you should end up with a mood board looking something like this. And so I'm starting to see the direction that I want to go down. If you have a brief, now is a good time to refer back to it. Here, I'm going to start to highlight some of the key words to incorporate into my design. And so I'm highlighting some of the key words being knowledge, wisdom, and creativity. And a fun activity to do next is some word association. For example, I'm writing down words that come to mind when I think of wisdom, knowledge, or creativity. So a couple words I'd like to explore more are the words lightning and beard. And so pulling some of my mood board imagery in, I'm going to trace some shapes like a lightning bolt beard, and I'm liking the shape of this hat. And finally, the face, which is notoriously hard to get the proportions right. So this is a good place to start. With it pieced together, I'm trying to block out the overall shape that I want my logo to be. So this is now looking a lot like Walter White. So here's a good spot to stop and critique what is working well and what isn't. So some of my thoughts are that it's too serious for the style that I'm wanting. But I'm liking the geometric shapes and the use of negative space. So next, it's time to get the pencil and paper out. And as you can see, I'm no illustrator, but here I can quickly sketch out the different shapes that I want to see, and they don't need to be perfect. And here I've decided to go with a simple mascot portrait of a shepherd and found the lightning bolt wasn't quite working for me. I've then taken one of my favorite sketches and uploaded the image into Illustrator. Here I'm going to click Image Trace, and then Expand, and delete any loose pixels. Now go up to Window, Contextual taskbar, select your image, and then in this prompt bar, we're going to type in the description and style that we want our logo to be. So here I'm typing man wearing hat, silhouette, comma, abstract, comma, minimalist. Now click the settings icon and play with the shape strength and details slider to get the right look for you, and click generate. So first attempt looks pretty cool, but not the look that I wanted. And so I've made a copy, and I'm going to adjust the prompt to be more geometric. So this is still not quite right. So instead, I'm going to use the style reference feature and select one of my images from my mood board and click generate. So now we have this Jason Momoa look like, but there are a few other options here this one being a lot nicer. So I've just cleaned this up a bit and copied this to a fresh artboard. At this stage, it's time to refine it. So I'm going to go up to View, Show Grid, and also turn Snap to Grid on. Make sure your image is transparent. And now I'm basically going to add in lines and circles to trace the edges of my image. This technique on the grid makes for perfect curves and proportions. And so I like to use multiples of the same curve. 
I've also divided the dimensions of my circle by two to get the smaller circle. And this helps with some of those tighter curves. The final product looks something like this. And I've made sure these curves and lines are added to a separate layer. Now select just the grid that you've created and the shape builder tool. And make sure you've got it set to fill. Now it's a bit of paint by numbers where I'm filling in all the areas of my image below. And I've made sure to make a copy of my grid in case I've made any mistakes or want to make any changes. And do this until it's completely filled in. Next, I'm bringing back the original face, mouth, and ear. And here I'm starting to add some of the finer details. And I'm starting to give it a bit of style, like in the beard with some of these angles. So this is the fun part, where I've slowly refined and reduced my image down until I'm happy with it. And this was my final outcome. So now I'm going to create an inverted version for on black. So to do this, duplicate your image, make it white so we can see it, then go up to Object, Path, Offset Path, and I have my offset set to 15. Now select the Shape Builder tool and select all of your logo, and I'm just going to remove anything inside of that new outline that we created, except for the face. So now we have our final logos, we can use Illustrator's mock-up tool to bring them to life. So go up to Window, Mock-up, and in this window here, with your logo selected, click Preview Mock-up, which will apply them to a bunch of presets. So we can choose from branded graphics, to digital graphics, to apparel and packaging. We can then place this on canvas, which gives us a live image where we can modify and resize the logo. We can also create mockups with our own images. So I've added my logo onto this image of a flag and I'm going to give it a color, then select both your image and your logo and go up to object, mockup, create mockup. And you can see this adjusts our logo over the surface and perspective of the image below. Finally, under the transparency menu, I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. Now we can add it to our other mockups. So the final result took me a little under an hour to create, but without the help of some new AI tools, this would have taken me a lot longer. What are your thoughts on the final logo? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to click that like button and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest design tips. And I'll see you in the next video.